Hello again. In the last lesson, we looked at cost-sensitive evaluation, where you use a cost matrix to evaluate the results of a classifier, and cost-sensitive classification, where the classification is performed with the aim of minimizing the cost rather than minimizing the percentage accuracy. But we didn't talk about how you do cost-sensitive classification, and that's what we're talking about in this lesson, 4.6. So there are two ways of making a classifier cost sensitive. Terminology is a little bit confusing. The first method is going to be called cost sensitive classification, and the second method is going to be called cost sensitive learning. So for cost sensitive classification, what we do is we adjust a classifier's output by recalculating the probability threshold. So I've opened here the German credit data set with a thousand instances. And I'm going to go and classify this with Naive Bayes. And uh, I get this uh, matrix here. And if I set output predictions, which I've set, then I can see in the output the actual predictions for the 1,000 instances. And uh, I've written those down here. Not all 1,000. I've just taken every uh, 50. Uh, and I've got 20 results here. Uh, the actual class of the instance, the predicted class of the instance, and the probability, the naive basis probability, that the instance is a good one rather than a bad one. And I've sorted this list by the probability column. And in fact, the effect of naive Bayes is it looks to see if the good probability is bigger than the bad probability, which is the same as saying is the good probability bigger than 0.5. So it's like drawing a line, the horizontal line, at 0.5 between the instance number 750 and instance number 800. Everything above that line is going to be classified as good, and everything below the line is going to be classified as bad. So going back to that little classified as matrix, the confusion matrix, 605 plus 151, that's 756 instances are going to be classified as good. And 95 plus 149, that's um, yeah, 154, I guess, are going to be classified as bad. Uh, and then within those, if we were to look at the, uh, at the matrix with the actual classes, and we counted the number of bad ones above the line, we'd find 151 bad ones above the line, those are misclassifications, and 95 good ones below the line, which are misclassifications. Well, we don't actually have to use a threshold of 0.5. So this is exactly the same uh, table, the actual and predicted, but I've changed the threshold to 0.833. And that gives me the classification matrix that's shown here. And a total cost, using the cost matrix we were talking about in the last class, uh, where some errors cost, one kind of error costs five times the cost of the other kind of error, we get a total cost here of 517 versus 850 for the threshold of 0.5 on the previous slide. And you can see that if you count up the numbers above the line, uh, then there's uh, 501 of them, 448 plus 53, of which 53 are bad, and count up the numbers below the line, and look at the number of good ones there, and those are the errors. And in general, it's not hard to show that given a general cost matrix, 0, lambda, mu, 0, you minimize the expected cost by classifying in instances good, or setting the threshold, at mu over lambda plus mu, which is where we got the 0.833 from for this problem. Well, that's what you do for naive Bayes. But what about methods that don't produce probabilities? Well, they almost all do produce probabilities. So uh, let's look at J48. Imagine J48 with min num obj set to 100. I've done this to force a small tree. And I won't do it for you, but I will get the tree shown here. And if I look at the tree, the leaves of the trees have effectively got probabilities. So the leftmost leaf at the bottom is like uh, predicting good, 
and there are 37 exceptions, 37 bad instances. So the good probability for this leaf is 1 minus 37 over 108, the total number of instances that reach that leaf, which is 0.657. And you'll find that in the list of probabilities in the table on the right. And then the next leaf is predicting bad. And there are uh, 68 out of 166 exceptions. So the good probability for that leaf is 0 0.410. And you'll see that number in the list in the table on the right, and so on. So we can get probabilities from J48 or from other methods as well. Well, let's do this. To uh, do this in Weka, we use a cost-sensitive classifier with minimum expected cost equals true. So I've got the credit uh, data set open. If I just run J48 now with that cost matrix, I get a cost of 1027. So over in Weka here, I'm going to select the cost-sensitive classifier, meta cost-sensitive classifier. And I'm going to configure that to have uh, the appropriate cost matrix. So I need to put in the cost matrix here, a 2x2 two two cost matrix. And I want the one we've been using all along with a 5 there. OK, and then I want to set minimize expected cost to true. And that gives us cost sensitive classification. Now if I run that with J48, did I select J48? No, I should have selected J48 here. Now if I run that with J48, I get this little matrix here and a total cost of 770. And uh, in fact, back to the slide, that's the middle section of the slide, the cost of 770 with the confusion matrix that's shown. Now actually, J48 is not very good at producing probabilities, and it's advantageous to use bagging. We talked about bagging in data mining with Weka Lesson 4.6. Because J48 produces a restricted set of probabilities, but using the bagging technique kind of enriches the set of probabilities produced. So if you just use bagged J48, I won't do this for you, but if you use that as a classifier, then you get a lower cost, a better a confusion matrix with a cost of 603, or 0.603, because there's 1,000 instances. OK, now the second method, that was what we're calling cost-sensitive classification, where you adjust the probability threshold. The second method we're going to call cost-sensitive learning, where instead of adjusting the output of the classifier, the probability threshold, we're going to learn a different classifier. And here's a way to think about that. Suppose that we created a new data set by replicating some instances in the old data set. So to simulate the cost matrix we've been talking about, suppose that we added four copies of every bad instance. So the new data set would have 700 good instances and 1,500 bad instances. And relearn, rerun, say J48. And when you think about it, that'll give the bad instances Errors on the bad instance is effectively a weight of 5 to 1, uh, more expensive than errors on the good instances. In practice, we won't actually copy the instances. We'll reweight them internally in uh, Weka. Well, the way of doing this is to use the same classifier, cost-sensitive classifier, but set minimize expected cost to false. We had it true before. Now we're going to set it to false, which is the default. So we're going to try that with uh, Naive Bayes and J48. Here we are with, um, let's use J48 first. And we're going to set minimize expected cost to false and run that. And now we get a total cost of 658 with this confusion matrix. So that corresponds to the middle line on this slide, J48 cost of 658. And if we were to use naive bays, we'd get a cost of 530. And if we used to use bagged J48, we'd get a cost of 581. In general, these are a little bit better. Certainly for J48, the results of cost-sensitive learning are a little bit better than the results of cost-sensitive classification that we looked at before. So here's what we've learned. Cost-sensitive classification 
is adjusts a classifier's output to optimize a given cost matrix. Cost sensitive learning, on the other hand, learns a new classifier to optimize with respect to a given cost matrix by effectively by duplicating or really internally reweighting the instances in accordance with the cost matrix. Both of these are done with the Weka classifier cost sensitive classifier. It implements both of those with a switch to choose which one uh, to use. And there are ways in Weka to store and load the uh, cost matrix automatically. In the activity, you're going to look more systematically at the uh, different effects of cost sensitive uh, learning and cost sensitive classification. So off you go and do that. And that's the end of class four. We'll see you again in class five. Bye for now.